What is up everybody, Finn here, and we are playing a bit of, well, it's Wildstar. It is an open beta at the moment. It was a 10 day open access, so I just want to basically talk about my thoughts. As you see at the moment, I'm currently running for a tutorial lyric, because I didn't want to show off too much of the game, but I have had the chance of basically playing around with it. Now, I do like this game, and the game is pretty good, but there's just some things I want to basically cover. So first of all, Wildstar, basically, it's kind of like a sci-fi MMO. It's made by Corbine Studios. Now, Corbine Studios are the make, well, it's basically compiles of 10 game developers who used to work on one of the big MMOs called World of Warcraft, and they basically branched off and they decided to make Wildstar. Now, the game's great. I've enjoyed a lot of playing with it, and as you can see, a bit of the combat, which we're going to get into. You'll see it in the background of the video while I talk about it. The combat on this game is very dynamic. Now, it's not one of them ones where you can sit around and just click. If you wish to do that, you'd probably get hurt because you've got to keep an eye on what's going on. And as you can see there, I'm just basically using one of the S-Bar moves because that's the class I'm playing as. It was based around illusions and I'm throwing some knives. And as you can see, the path is basically the line of target. That's the line of damage. So if the target isn't in that path, you're not going to hit him. So you can't just really click and auto-click. There's no auto-attack whatsoever. The combat itself is totally down to you. You've got to kind of time it, you've got to precision it well, and you've got to get them in the range, and all the different abilities have pretty much the similar kind of pass system in which you can actually attack. Now, the different classes, let's talk about them. So you have the warrior, and that is your standard class on any MMO. You have a class which is called the Spell Slinger. I played a little bit of Spell Slinger, and that is your dual gun kind of character. You can run and gun, but once again, let's say you have this dynamic combat where it doesn't matter how good you are running and gunning, if they aren't in the range, or their grid so much it lays down on the floor, you're not going to hit them. You then have the Esper who I'm playing as at the moment, and just, it's a little bit fiddly at first to get used to, but it works well, and I really did like the combat system on this, I really did. You will also have an engineer, now I haven't tried the engineer, I kind of kept away from the engineer side of things, because I, I do believe it's more along the lines of, you get to build turrets, and you basically aid in the combat, more of a support class. You also have a class which is called the Stalker, I played a bit of that. It is one of the, it's really fun, it's a strange class because you have claws a bit like Wolverine when you start out. But if you were to compare it against other classes, that is kind of your assassin kind of merely gonna go and hack and slash kind of character you would play as. And you have the medic. Now the medic basically everyone knows you're gonna be down to healing. Now the difference between this game is is that every class can DPS, every class can use support and range and every class can heal further down the line you get abilities and you can mix them up so you can aid you can do play basically the way you want to play which is really yeah. good now one of the other interesting things which yeah, i kind of liked about this game is where you had a path system now the four path systems were soldier settler explorer and there was another one which i just can't remember off the top of my head but what that allows you to do is oh it the other one was scientist sorry what that allows you to do is, if you select the path, because on this at the moment I've picked Settler, now you don't get to see the Settler until in a minute, but every part of the world, there's always something going on, there's always something for you to interact, there's always something for you to get involved in. Now with the Settler, the Settler's good because you build resources, now if you're in a combat system, you're in a combat area, sorry, and the whole world is basically fighting around you, what you can do is you can build things like health boosts, you can build speed boosts, you can then go to a bar, you can build a brew station, that allows people to have better drinks, better ale. It's it's really, really unique, and that's what I kind of liked about it. There's always something for you to do. You can take a break out of the mission system, and you can go and do one of your paths. Now, if you're an explorer, for instance, I like exploring on games, they will give you missions in certain areas, which come up in the bottom right, next to the play button, which then allow you to basically double jump up on objects that will be on heights certain things you've got to find and that's pretty good i really enjoyed that aspect of it and what i played so like i said this is just my thoughts this is just what i personally feel like now i know the game's got a few issues at the moment i did experience some frame drops but the game is an open beta and when it goes to launch hopefully you never know they might be fixed now let's talk about the two factions so at the moment i'm playing as the exiles so if you were to compare it against let's say world of warcraft you might as well because they did work on that project where you have You've got the Alliance and you've got the Horde. Now the Exiles are kind of your Alliance. And as you can see, now on the screen, we're looking at the Settlers. And the Dominion, that is more like your Horde. So the Dominion all about, basically, 
they want to claim this plant, this is theirs, and they don't want to share it, and they don't want to basically give it to anybody else. And the exiles want to come here and make it their own. They want to be able to live here, so that's good as well. Now, let's talk about the different classes based on that each, the exiles and the dominion. So, at the moment I am playing as the Auron. Now, first of all, we'll cover the exiles. So the exiles, the, the different races, you've got the humans, which is pretty much on every MMO. You have the Grand Knock, which is basically, they look like they are built out of rock. They're really, really good. The character customization on this is really good as well. You have the Auron, who I'm playing as, are kind of like a, a mystical fox kind of character. And you have the Mordash, and they're more like cyborgs. On the Demonian side of things, you have the Cassian, who are kind of like general, kind of uppity humans. Really posh. Well speaking, you have the Makari, who are basically the opposite of the Grand Rocks. They're more demonic kind of creatures. You have the Draken, and you have Chow. So the Mekari, sorry, are, are sorry, are basically the opposite, the Mordesh. But yeah, but they they are the different races you can actually choose as. But I say the game is really well. It works really good. I'm not going to go too much into the game because if you do wish to buy it, I don't wish to spoil it. Now my question is. Do I go out and buy this? Now, it does have quite a lot of other good features. It has a home system where you can basically, as they're calling the Nexus, you can claim a pot in the Nexus as your own and you can fully customize your house instead of house on a mountain if you wished. And you could live there. They also have what they're calling warfronts. These are basic combat side of things. Open world PvPs in the game. But what I did like the most about the mission system as well is that all the different paths come together. So if I'm in an area and I'm settling, there could be somebody who chose the soldier path and there will be waves and waves and waves of enemies coming at that soldier. I then can go collect the resources in the area on the battlefield. I can then set up health boosts to aid the person who is playing on the soldier path along with the combat. And I can also join in on that. I can go and help them kill. I can get XP off it and I like that. If you're exploring, you might have to jump up on a mountain and set up a satellite dish. I don't know. Who knows? But I really did like that. Now, the other thing which is kind of strange about the game, and this is what's got me kind of on the fence, is, and I'm not 100% sure how it works, they have a system, and basically this is their business model. The business model kind of works like EVE Online. So there's going to be a subscription base. When you buy the game, first of all, in the UK it's £34.99, you get first 30 days free. Now, what you can choose to do with that, you can take that 30 days, and you can put that into the system which they're calling cred. Now, cred you could buy off players and cred you could buy from basically the wild store store itself. Now what cred allows you to do is use actual in-game gold to buy gameplay time. So for instance, if for instance you're like me, you don't want to invest money because you don't have it and you don't want to kind of be subscribing every month, what you can do is you can basically grind your way for money, so to speak, and you can actually make the game free to play now I like the idea but I'm not too sure how it's gonna actually work when the game goes live people might be selling cred on the marketplace for stupid price but if Wildstar's store itself has it as a reasonable offer great problem solved we will probably go down that route right, so like I see they have dynamic cutscenes as well so it depends which area you go in the cutscenes kind of come into play and basically build up the storyline and it's got some humor built on it as well the humor side of things is quite funny when you level up which you'll see in a minute you get a big kind of boom you've leveled up holy shit cupcake kind of thing that goes on and I thought that's funny we're gonna see it in a minute so here it goes let's see if this where we get the level up here we go see what I mean <laughs> you don't see that on many MMOs so the comedy side of things they've incorporated is, goes quite well. The art visual style of it, the cell shading and all the kind of cartoonish kind of sci-fi art, that works well with it as well for what the game is. And overall the game is really good. The game plays well, the game feels well, apart from a few FPS drops now and again. My question now is, is this something which I would go out and actually take a buy? Is this something that you guys would like to watch me play? You know, I've got to take all them considerations if I'm going to bring this into my channel. So I thought I'd done just a quick impressions video and just talk over some of the basics and basically explain what it's about. And as you can see, a little bit more of the combat system. It's really fluid and that's what I like about it. You can't just kind of sit and click. Esper, you kind of have to stand still when you cast some of the moves so far. But further down the line, it, things do start to get really big. The world is actually huge. 
there's loads of things that's going on, and it's something that you could you could spend quite a lot of time playing it and not get bored. I didn't once find myself kind of drifting off. I know this kind of tutorial area which you're seeing at the moment, but the tutorial area even doesn't feel like a tutorial area. It tells you some of the basics, but you're pretty much thrown straight into combat, and it's awesome. So, please let me know what you think, guys. If this is something you would like me to, when the game goes live, cover, something you'd like me to play, please let me know. And until then, I will see you next time. And thank you for listening to me talk about Wildstar. I hope I covered some of the basics and kind of filled in some of the gaps and some of the questions. But if not, post in the comments below and I will try to answer them. And until then, definitely go out, go and try to open beta. Let's say it was on for 10 days. you still got a few days left. And it's definitely worth trying out. So, until then, that is me just saying goodbye. Begins again.